For us yet. There we go. All right. Good morning, Faith. Uh, welcome to worship. We are going to start this off with you have shown us. Uh, please join us. Here we go. So God, what is good? You 
you have shown us, O oh Lord, what you require. You have heard all our songs, how we long to worship you. Yet you've told us the offering you desire to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with you, God. You said to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with you, God. You have shown us the riches of your love you have shown us your heart for those in need Lord you're opening our ears to the cries of the poor you have called us to be your hands and feet to do justly to love to walk humbly with you, God. You said to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with you, God. To the oppressed and the broken, to the widow and the orphan, let the river of your justice flow through us to the oppressed and the broken to the widow and the orphan let the river of your justice flow through us let the river of your justice flow let the river of your justice flow let the river of your justice flow through us faith said to do justly to love mercy to walk humbly with you God said to do justly to love mercy to walk humbly with you God Justly to love mercy, to walk humbly with you, God. Amen. Amen. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this beautiful day. A special welcome to those of you who are watching from home today on, on either Facebook Live or on our live stream. And we want to thank the Tolsmans for sponsoring, Brian and Jennifer Tolsman, uh, for sponsoring the broadcast uh, in order for us to be able to celebrate Millie Wickman's 100th birthday. So happy birthday, Millie. Woo! You would not be able to put that many candles on a cake in the Boundary Waters this past week, okay? Now... I uh, hope, you, uh, hope you've been able to say some happy birthdays to Millie. If you know her, uh, reach out. She would love to hear from you this week. Uh, this week, uh, exciting. We're getting ready. Uh, we got su uh, summer Sunday school. So I'm actually going to invite the kids to come on up right now. And you can come join me. And we are going to share a little bit as you're coming forward. I would love for you guys to think about some of the favorite things you've been able to do outside this summer. So think about that. Think about that. All right. Okay, come on up. Oh, I thought, Nina, you were coming up as a kid, too. No. All right, come join us. I know you, you might have some good stories, too. Hey, have you guys done anything fun outside? Like, what are some things that you like to do? You play with your friends? Yeah? How about you? Go swimming? How about you? You went hiking? Yeah, did you go on a vacation or anything? Yeah? Lots of hiking? Oh, good. Uh, I love to go outside and be in nature. I was actually out on a canoe trip all week, so I'm just getting back too. And one of the cool parts about nature is that we use something called our wilderness voice. Do you have a guess what a wilderness voice would be? So a wilderness voice is we want to be really, really quiet. Why do you think we want to be quiet, especially when we're out in nature? What do you think we're hoping to see if we're really, really quiet? Yeah? Yeah, exactly. So, like loons or, you know, there could be deer. 
unicorns. You might be able to see some unicorns out in the nature. Have you seen some? You gotta be really quiet, otherwise you won't see them. Okay. Unfortunately, the mosquitoes still find you even if you're quiet. I found that out, unfortunately. So, but one of the cool parts about uh, having our wilderness voice is that we're trying to be really quiet so we can see nature. And that means that when we're like praying, like especially before a meal, that we have a special prayer that we do that's a little bit quieter. Do you guys want to help show everybody out there how to do it? Okay, let's all have, let's have the three of you stand up. And we especially would do this like before a meal. So like it's, we got communion coming today, so we're going to do a little prayer over our communion here, okay? So here's what we do. It's super easy, okay? So you're going to point to your friends, and you can maybe point to all of them too. So point to all of your friends, and then we're going to point to the food, and then we're going to point to God, and then we're going to do this. It's a little bit loud, but you got to clap three times. That is the canoe guide, Grace. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. You want them to do it with us? Let's do it, okay? We're going to put the whole thing together. So first, point to our friends. Point to the food. Point to God. Thank you very much. Amen. And that's your prayer for the day. And you guys can follow Kathy. You're going to learn a little bit about Joshua this morning. And the rest of us are going to begin, and you'll grab your, um, your book as we begin our worship service. So please. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace as you feel comfortable with one another. We worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, In Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven, and loved into abundant life. Amen. Please join me. O God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we have our prayer lab minute. God can speak to us in so many creative and unexpected ways. Recently, I was struck by song lyrics as I drove to faith. The words said, a miracle's a miracle, even when it's ordinary, depending on what you look through. It made me wonder, what am I looking through? And what are the ordinary miracles that I'm missing? Because I'm not looking for them, or I'm not open to them at all. I invite you to change your lenses, and with an attitude of prayer, open up your heart to ordinary miracles. A gorgeous sunset on the lake, a child's precious hand, the intricate engineering of a flower. Then, if you're willing, 
take your camera or phone as your new lens for this prayer activity. You can then share your photos of these ordinary miracles with us at Faith. We will use these images of your photo documented prayers in our worship services. You can send your photos to either me or Deanna in the office. Our photos will encourage more in our community to see God's incredible and holy magic at work in the world. A reading from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the structures of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile, away from this land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman, and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me, to, took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A gospel reading from the sixth chapter of Mark. Glory to you, Lord. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers in the, and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Oh, ask me what, whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord.
Wild grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, you heard me right. Wild grace. You guys never heard of wild grace before? Well, at our opening campfire this past week, as I was at uh, Camp Vermilion on Monday night, we were introduced to the theme of the week for our upcoming Boundary Waters canoe trip. And so Brett, the canoe country coordinator, asked each of us who was gathered there what grace is. So we did a little brainstorm. Some of the words that came to mind were like kindness and forgiveness and blessing. All of these things are true, but then he asked us, well, what did we think if we put the word wild before it? When we think of wild, then it came to things like out of control, untamed, extravagantly unexpected. I even thought of the word reckless, like the song that you guys sing, Reckless Love, right? And I really was curious where they were going with this. And so then they had us divide up into the groups because we had three groups who were going to be going into the Boundary Waters. And so each of our groups started talking about how we would show each other grace when we were confronted with challenges and obstacles for the upcoming trip. Wild grace to us meant that we were going to lift each other up and then that would allow for opportunities to see God's presence in new ways. And so Faith had three groups and each of these groups had different levels of experience, skill sets, ages. Each group had at least two adults plus the canoe guide that was provided by the camp. And so we had four days of paddling, portaging, and experiencing this grace for ourselves. The question really then is what would wild grace look like in the wild, wild north of the Boundary Waters in northern Minnesota? So here's our group at the beginning of the trip. And as we were preparing to depart for our entry point, Brett from the camp again read us a passage from a book called Paddle Whispers where the author Douglas Wood, if you've read the book Old Turtle, he's the same author, he talked about, uh, he gave us a little bit of caution about hoping for different outcomes than whatever the current day is presenting you. For example, if you're miserable now, Just wait. You never know what could come next in the Boundary Waters. And then he rattled off a list of potentially even more miserable experiences. Bugs, sunburn, soreness from portaging, soreness from paddling, too hot, too muddy, too cold, not muddy enough, too late to find a campsite. And as he kept reading, one of the girls leaned in and said to one of her friends, she goes, is this supposed to make us want to go on this trip? But it ended with a why. Why go through all of this? And that answer was, well, because of what this journey would lead us to. The beauty, the nature, the sense of awe in being in God's presence. The accomplishment. And in many ways, I think the why was captured in this concept of wild grace. Now, unfortunately for my group, we experienced a whole lot more wild than we experienced grace as our trip began. See, the very first portage that we had was a mile and a half, and unfortunately, it was flooded by a beaver dam that created a really muddy, murky trail. 
It's a miracle nobody lost a shoe as people were putting their feet into the ground and their foot would go about all the way to thigh deep in the sludge. We were truly on the road or route less traveled. And of course, the bugs noticed this and feasted like kings. We experienced so many biting flies on this trip that my hand literally swelled to twice the size for the first two days of the trip. And I also could really tell, as, as climate change has truly been affecting our entire world, we're noticing this, especially in the Boundary Waters, as water levels were extremely low. The beavers were hard at work making dams. So this is one of five dams that we had to cross on the very first river that we took. And one of the dams was even bigger than this. It was at least five feet tall. And as we came up to the dam, we could see there was that, that huge drop in elevation that was right below us. Also, we had this uh, experience where we saw a really beautiful rock cairn. You know what a cairn is? It's, it's when people have like taken a rock and then stack another rock on top of another rock. It's you know, a beautiful decorative uh, way to, to, to be able to set things up. And as we saw it, we're like, wow, that's a really beautiful rock cairn. And then we can, proceeded to paddle another half of a mile. Uh, it wasn't until we got to another dead end where we're like, I bet that rock cairn was where we were supposed to stop into our, our portage. So then we had to backtrack. And then uh, we finally, finally, after that portage, were able to reach the lake that we were going to be camping on that night after a very long day of paddling. And the one campsite that we had really, really wanted to get to was the only campsite on the entire lake that was taken. And so we were all kind of like hanging our heads, but we finally made it to camp, we set up, and at the end of a really, really long day, we all gathered together after dinner, and we shared our highs and our lows. But then the the guide also said, share your high, share your low, but then also share where have you seen wild grace. I thought that was a really thoughtful kind of question, especially for a lot of these high school students, to be able to try to articulate where they could see the blessings or the grace from this day. And I, I had a great day. I know it was a challenge, but I was thinking to myself, where are these kids going to come up with blessings and grace? But I was amazed by them. You see, they all admitted to the struggles, and, and one of them even looked at me and said, wow, Pastor John, what did you get us into? But none of them complained. They had no whining And so as they were going around the circle and sharing, they all had positive things to say. They all were talking about the accomplishments that they felt. They shared the wild grace of having this beautiful campsite that we wouldn't have gone to if we would have gone to the one that we thought we were going to, if that was the plan that we thought was set before us. They talked about how grateful they were for a delicious meal, for cooler weather that allowed for us to do as much as we could accomplish that day without being too hot and getting sunburned. They articulated the grace of being able to work together and do things that they had never done before. They were tired. They were eaten alive by insects. They were covered in mud. But at the end of the day, they were hopeful. And so as I was also thinking about preparing for a sermon this week, I knew what the passage was. It was about John the Baptist and being beheaded. And I was trying to think, well, how on earth is this story going to play out? I thought about the disciples. I was like, wow, you know, what were the disciples feeling when, when word spread that John the Baptist had been murdered? Were they hopeful? And so we look at this story a little closer, and John is the one who has kind of pointed the way. He's the one who's been the predecessor of Jesus. He's the one who's preparing the way, and he's now the first one to pay the price. And this is an awful story. It's a brutal death. It's a humiliating way for John the Baptist to be put on display with his head on a platter for all of the dinner guests to see. But here he is. John was viewed as the leader, and he was a threat. He was obviously a threat to Herod's wife. He was a threat to all of the ruling powers. That's why he's in prison in the first place. And so the question that really lingered in my mind throughout the week was, well, where's the wild grace in this? Is there any wild grace What grace can we hear in a story like this? So think about it. You know, getting rid of John really should have solved all of the problems, right? Should have solved Herod's wife's problems, but it didn't. Should have solved the ruling power, should have solved Herod's problems, but it didn't. In fact, John's disciples now strongly unite around Jesus. Yeah, they gather John's body and they give it a proper burial, but when it's time to move on, they get back to the mission. They go and they are sent out. And it's time to tell the good news about Jesus. It's time to share about the wild grace of Jesus, talk about the miracles that he's done, of healing, to talk about the invitation to come and hear Jesus preach. 
Losing John could have caused these disciples to lose their faith, to give up, go back to their fishing boats. But they become even more devoted to the mission. They go back to Jesus and they share those stories. And they go on these mission trips into the countryside and they talk about what God has done and how they've been able to teach others about the kingdom. This is wild grace, my friends. That book, Paddle Whispers, with, with Doug Wood, reminded me that each and every single day in the Boundary Waters will bring a new adventure, no matter what that is. What wild grace would our group encounter then with the rest of this trip? So after a really long, hard first day, we woke up the next morning to see beautiful blue skies, minimal bugs, and well-managed portage trails that didn't cause you to sink a foot deep except for one. In fact, when we did encounter this muddy portage, which just so happened to be an international portage in Canada, uh, Vanessa, one of our group members, grabbed the pack and was ready, to start pa- uh, was ready to start moving forward, and then this happened. She sunk in all the way, and then the weight of the pack caused her to fall over completely onto her back, covered, doused in mud. If this would have happened the day before, there may have been some grumbling or there may have been some, oh, more of this. But this was a new day. This was a new energy. You could see I'm laughing and I'm not laughing at her. I'm laughing with her as the whole group is watching and her mom is taking the picture. We were all really just in a great mood for what was was in front of us this day. That night we reflected on Wild Grace. And everybody shared that one of their highs was Vanessa falling in the mud. But we also talked about the struggles and burdens that we had experienced the day before made this day even better. Their spirits were so high. They were appreciative of all all that they had been through. They had this time to be able to relax and enjoy a beautiful sunset with Canada in the background. So then on our last full day on trail, we had the chance to see something pretty cool. God's wild grace in ways that these kids had never seen before. So we paddled up to this giant rock, this huge rock face. And it looks like just another rock, right? You know, if you're in the Boundary Waters, this is just another rock. Except if you take a little bit closer look. You see, hundreds of years ago, the Ojibwe tribe painted images along this wall that you would just probably paddle by if you didn't know that you should look. So here we are, a little motion for you. And then we got closer, and you're like, yeah, that just looks like a rock. Well, look a little closer. There's a drum and an archer that have been painted on this wall. This whole wall is covered with different images painted by the Ojibwe, like this one. Just another rock. Look closer. Where is it? Where is it? (gasps) A moose. And then over here, another one. You talk about wild grace. This art has somehow, miraculously, been able to remain intact over hundreds of years despite the Minnesota harsh winters and, uh, harsh, winters and, and harsh summers. Yet they're here and they give us a reminder of how these old stories have been able to last and can impact us today. It even got me thinking a little bit as I noticed the low waters, I noticed there was smoke from the wildfires. How am I being called to help take care of God's creation? How am I showing wild grace to take care of this earth? Are there things that I can do to help preserve the world that we live in? And I thought about how I lean, in my, lean into my faith, how I lean into Christ, and how Christ is a story of wild grace. So the love of Christ, which is revealed in what happens after John's murder in this story today, is something I think is truly important. It's the stories that we're going to hear in the next week and the weeks to come. We know that the disciples, as they follow Christ, they know that this might not end well for them and they might face a similar fate, but the death of Christ will not be an ending for them. And they know that Jesus, as he's going to be revealed to them as the Savior of the world, as disciples, helps to to inform us to this day that our lives help reveal Jesus to our neighbors, that our love reveals God's love to those that we come in contact with. And that is pretty wild grace, isn't it? I come back to this question of why did the kids have to explain wild grace every night? I think a week in the middle of nowhere 
in the middle of this wilderness got them to truly appreciate how God can be revealed in ways that they weren't used to seeing God. Kind of like in your prayer lab as we think about those ordinary miracles. What a great reminder for us to be able to open our eyes and look around, see God in ways that we haven't. So what about you? You don't have to go on a canoe trip for these ordinary miracles. You don't have to go on a canoe tri- trip to see the presence of God. Where has the blessing of God's wild grace been present in your life? Has God's wild grace been pushing you to share wild grace with others? Has God's wild grace turned some of your suffering perhaps into peace? Can God's wild grace turn a burden into a blessing? Because God's grace is really all around us. And once you start noticing it, you can't help but see it. Everywhere. Truly wild grace indeed. Amen. As we give our gifts and our offerings to the Lord in this time, as we reflect and pause, as we get ourselves situated for uh, for our prayers and and for communion, I thank you as you have been able to share and to be able to share God's uh, love and abundance with the world around us. We did this last week, and I thought it was really nice. We'll do our offertory prayer, but then I'll, if you've got some prayers on your hearts, I'll ask you to offer them up. Let's pray together. And you are welcome to stand. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. As we gather into prayer at this time, I invite you to to lift up anything. We pray together. Uh, God of beautiful creation, we thank you for this community, for this church, for all who are gathered here. And we offer up these prayers, these celebrations, or uh, all these names that we are thinking of who are in need. Healing. Janet and Yossi. Healing for Rich, Janet, and Yossi. Okay. Healing for Janet and Yossi. Okay, for healing for Dan for an accident from an ATV vehicle. Yeah. Okay, praying for your wife and family. Absolutely. For Keith's sister-in-law, just diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. For Asher, for Britta. Support for Grandpa Milton. Yeah. Safe trip for Scott. For your niece Jill. For Millie as she celebrates her hundredth birthday today. grateful for the beautiful summer days that are in front of us. And all of those prayers that we name quietly in our hearts or in our weeks, we offer up to you, O God. And so it was that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Together we join in the words as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those of you who are at home, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you who are gathered here, we will have uh, communion at the very end of worship as we uh, do our final blessing. We'll invite you to come forward at that time as we uh, will get to that after our closing hymn.
But together now, we share in this blessing. I'll invite you, if you'd like to get a hand in the air and, and maybe make the sign of the cross as you look around, uh, kind of like the kids did with uh, pointing at everyone, pointing at their friends. Those of you who are at home will be blessing you as well. So you, you can say this with me. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Singing, you'll never let go. God's grace will never let us go. send us out. Uh, as you guys would like to come forward here in just a minute, we also thank you for watching us, uh, for being part of our worship at home or on your pontoon or backyard or wherever you're doing. So go in peace, serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God. Now, if you're here in the sanctuary, we invite you to come forward for communion. Uh, we'll, we'll give you the bread and the wafer. Uh, there's gluten-free. There's also grape juice in the middle if you'd like, and then you'll have a, uh, the basket over here to, to discard and then go to either of those doors as we go off and take Christ with us into this week. Amen. Come on up.